Our next guest is a former K1 Grand Prix champion, a UFC title contender, is coming off a first round knockout of Antonio Bigfoot Silva. He'll be taking on Frank Mir at UFC Brisbane on March 20th. The Super Simone, Mark Hunt. Welcome back to Submission Radio. Hey guys, thanks for having me on. Hey, it's a great pleasure to have you back on the show, Mark. We uh, we haven't spoken to you since your your win at UFC 193. We got to know what have you been doing with yourself in the last couple of months? Um, just a little bit of training, you know, and taking the family on holidays. Just the, just the normal stuff. Just back yeah, in no. camp now for Brisbane. So yeah, I've been uh, doing a little bit of stuff. Yeah, well, you got into tre- tremendous shape for your last fight against Bigfoot Silver. Have you managed to stay in shape, or has the good food sort of gotten to you? <laughs> um, well, you know, I'm still in a, I just started training, so it's all good. I, of course, you lose a bit of training if you don't train constantly. So and I have traveled a few countries to you know, take the family in the holidays. So, you know, I'll be ready for Brisbane, so no worry about that. <laughs> I already made a mistake once about cutting weight, you know, like 11 kilos before the fight in Adelaide. So I wanted to make that mistake again. Good to hear. You you, you trained at AK Thailand for your last camp with Mike Swick. Will you be training there again for, for your fight against Frank Mir? Uh, no, I, I decided to do my camp at the Gold Coast. So I'm in the Gold Coast at the moment doing my camp. Um, you know, the guys arrive uh, probably in the 22nd of this month. So I just started training at a heartbreak, uh, a heartbreak gym. And, and I might do a bit of zoo while I'm here and um, train at JW's gym at, uh, uh, down here in the, in the coast here. So there's a lot of options to train at, a lot of places to train with. And um, it's such a beautiful city to train. <laughs> Got the beach. You've you've got the beautiful beach obviously in Queensland. Uh, Queensland's known for it, but so is Thailand. I'm just wondering why why did you make the decision not to go back to Thailand? Well, I mean it's it's a it's a, an hour flight for my family, and uh, it's not um, hours and hours away like Thailand. Plus, you know it's a Western country, and I I mean I don't mind it here. I I love it here in Queensland. It's pretty cool. And you've got everything here. It's um, everything you need, and you have to get an interpreter for shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Plus, you can hit up yeah. Movie World and hit the Superman roller coaster. Now, let me ask you: with a time frame, how's that work for you in terms of getting into peak shape? With just two months to go before UFC Brisbane, is that enough time for you? And do you think you'll be able to possibly even top yourself and come in in better shape for this one? Oh, I'll be coming in really good shape. You know, I already started camp, and it's good. Uh, I got uh, my nutrition going down. Everything's going well, so it's going to be, you know, like the same shape, even better than uh, Melbourne. So I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's um, you know, it's, it's awesome. Everybody it's was talking about. Everybody was talking about how you look like you're in the best shape of your career after your last camp. The crazy thing is that you're making these kinds of improvements at the age of 41. You know, do you feel like you're giving hope to a lot of people and showing that you know age really is just a number? Well, it is just a number. The thing is, you know, I haven't used steroids or drugs or anything to cut me getting it. I've been freaking battling with these cheaters for years, you know, so <laughs> mm. that's the difference. But now the, the, the thing is the, the cheating, the, the testing's gone differently. You know, I got tested for the first time in Melbourne, but, um, you know, it's harder for these, these, these cheaters to get away with it all. So, you know, good, good rinse to you. And, you know, I've been to use my axe to get rid of your monkeys. <laughs> it's interesting that you mention that because obviously a lot of people are being are popping for different substances, especially now that the testing has kicked in. I know you've been in the sport for a really long time, but is a part of you surprised that so many people have been testing positively lately? Or are you sort of expecting it as soon as you saw the testing was going to take place more frequently? Well, to be honest, I didn't really, you know, um, the first time I did talk to the, to the boss of the about steroids and things, it was in pride, and, and then they pretty much just laughed at me about it. You know, I was like, oh, well, I didn't really look into it about you know, the, the the cheating of the whole scenario, I didn't know how it worked, and um, I don't really care about it, you know, so it's not even a big deal. So if they get caught cheating, they're caught cheating, and it doesn't really matter to me, so I don't really, I don't really, uh, if they get caught, that's, that's on them, so it's fine. Let's talk about your opponent, Frank Mir. He's he's an interesting guy in the sense that a few years ago when he was on a four-fight losing streak, people were talking about how he should retire and that he was done in the sport. Now, he seems like he's had quite the career resurgence. It kind of reminds us somewhat of yourself when you first came into MMA and you know, then you're entering to the UFC. A lot of people didn't expect you to end up as a title contender. Do you see any similarities between yourself and Frank in that sense? Well, yeah, Frank's a great fighter, and I mean, he used to be the champion, uh, the UFC champion. You know, he's a nice guy. I really, I like Frank. Um, and it's sort of the same issues as mine. I mean, people are always going to say bad things. They say, they always say, 
then you lose a lot of times, oh, you know, you're, you're shit, you're done, whatever it is. But, you know, that's the good thing about being a, a top-end fighter and a positive fighter, like a lot of our top-end fighters do, we, we don't listen to those rubbish talkers and those those pieces of crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, it just doesn't, they don't, you know, those, those haters don't even face whatever they say because they, they're meaningless. They're just, uh, they're just guys that talk about shit and just, you know, they're not doing stuff. You know, to change it, so you know, uh, good on them for doing that, and you know, so it does remind me of some similar situation that would mine as well. So, I've been down many times, and then it's not like I'm going to fade out of here, you know, I'm going to be going to say all sorts of shit about you, and they still say shit about you, but you know, you never want, you never please everybody, and it's the main thing to stay true to yourself and just keep doing what you're doing. You know, if you've got dreams and aspirations and goals, you know, you just got to chase them down. That's what life is all about, chasing them down and um, trying to live a whole life. <laughs> well, Frank's had a few knockout victories recently, something that he's not really being known for. What do you think about Frank Mir's improved striking as of late? Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's good. Uh, yeah, so the thing about it is everyone has to evolve. Their striking has gone bad, which is good. So, you know, all the top guys are relevant and good at uh, well versed at, at uh, striking and ground. So it's, it's good on him. Do you think his striking will be any threat to you in this fight? No, I mean, I, I don't think so. I mean, I'm one of the best strikers on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, you know, I'm really interested in just uh, to organize what I want to do, you know. I mean, I, I know what he's trying to do. He's going to try and pull me down and start playing the jiu-jitsu games. So, <laughs> 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 but that's, uh, we'll see what happens when it comes down to the, to the party. Well, it's funny that you mentioned the jiu-jitsu party because you've actually gone to the ground with uh, Fabrizio Vadum. For people that don't know, Vadum is one of the best jiu-jitsu guys in the world in the heavyweight division. How do you feel about going to the ground with a guy like Frank Mir who's known for sort of breaking limbs? Well, I can go down on the ground with anybody. Like I said, I've, you've got to be well versed at all, all areas to be to be playing around uh, at the top end, you know what I mean? So, you know, I... I um I should have been black belt already. I've been training in, in Jiu Jitsu for a long, long time, but um yeah, I, I don't mind going to ground or wherever it wants to be. If the party's going there, then that's where we're going. It's fine. We mentioned Frank breaking limbs. You know, obviously you're very confident. You had your arm broken by Sean McCorkle via Americana in your UFC debut. Would you be looking to be extra cautious against Frank on the ground? You know, given that he's made out a career of it, especially because he's you know every time he's broken somebody's limbs, it's always seemed very unexpected and sort of out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really going to be cautious about anything. If he breaks my arm while we're fighting, well, that's over it. Like I said, I'm just going to, I'm not worried about what he's up to. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm sure we'll call with dinner back my arm. He just, uh, he got, I got caught, you know? Yeah, well, he we know caught. the fight. A long time out of the ring. First time in the octagon, you know? Well, we know the fight is going to be a five-rounder, but the amount of finishes you and Frank have, do you think will even last that long? I don't know how the fight's going to go. It's going to be a great fight. Um, I know his game plan, and I know he's going to, he knows why. Yeah. You know, I know he, he knows I'm going to try and knock his lips off, and, he knows, <laughs> and I know he's going to try and break my shit up. <laughs> 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 it's just a matter of who imposes their game first, so that's all it is. <laughs> this fight's a, you know, it's also a decently quick turnaround from uh, your last fight. How many fights are you looking to have this year, Mark? Well, I wanted to fight in Korea, like, you know, like last year, but... Uh, I wasn't allowed to. I wasn't great shape. I was ready to go to that freaking thing, but it didn't matter. This is just as quick, so it's good. And I'm looking to fight. So hopefully, be two or three times this year. Now, I mean, if I'm not injured, I can fight all the time. But um, mm. I guess not. I hopefully try and get about three or four this year. We'll see what happens. It's not my choice and call and who I fight and when I fight. It's um, it's UFC's call and um, Joe Silver and Dana's call. So, well, a winner if Frank puts you on a two-fight win streak. Just wondering, Mike, how far do you think they'll put you from another title shot? And are you, are you hoping to be fighting for the title before the end of 2016? Well, I hope so. You know, I wanted to ask for um, Overeem or JDS after the, uh, you know, for this fight. But um, I wasn't allowed, and, you know, I have to fight. Frank Moore is just as, uh, you know, he's just as accomplished as, as me. He's a world UFC champion, so... But if, if I beat Murray, then I can get a, probably a top five guy. I've been probably, uh, that would be my bidding for a world title shot, hopefully. So hopefully by the end of the year, maybe, it's if I win both fights. It's interesting that you mentioned JDS and Overeem because that a very a sort of strange fight in the last fight where Overeem beat JDS. A lot of people were surprised 
with JDS because he just did not look like the same fighter that fought yourself and was, you know, a dominant champion in the UFC. What did you think of his performance against Overeem? Were you sort of taken back by the fact that he didn't quite perform like people thought he would? Oh, to be honest, I didn't even actually end up seeing the fight. I just heard the result. I was trying to make the fight, but I, um, I think I had to go and take the kids somewhere. So, but I heard the fight was, um, you know, was like that, and I was, well, I don't know, man. You know, he's got a what's going on with JDS or, or, or over him, how it works. But, you know, I think a lot of people have a fair idea what's going on, but only time will tell. Speaking of titles, just want to get your opinion. The heavyweight title picture is pretty busy. You've got Vadum facing Kane again, and then the next challenger you know, has yet to be announced. Overeem, like we said, knocked out JDS in the second round, and then Stipe Mircic beat Arlovsky in the first. Just wondering, who do you think deserves the title shot more? Of course, Stipe should get the title shot more. I mean, he's like close to it. I think he should be next. Um, I, mean, I don't know. I mean... It's funny how it works because some guys that weren't even in the top ten, they just they thought up they beat a, a top three guy or five guy, and then they get a they boosted right up everyone else. It's uh, funny how it works. You know, mm-hmm. it's all about trying to get the fighting the top five guy and beating them and getting a title shot. So everyone's trying to take the slipstream to the top end and fight for the title because <laughs> it's only the only thing that matters these days is, is, the, is the gold is the belt. <laughs> Well, if Stipe does end up getting the shot like you've mentioned, you faced him in Adelaide and you f- faced the current champion in Fabrizio Vadum. How do you think he do? Do you think he has what it takes to beat a Kane or Vadum? And uh, which one do you think would be a better fight for him? Who? Stipe you're talking about? Or yeah, for Stipe, yeah. About? For Stipe. I think, he'll, uh, do well. I think Stipe will do well against all of them. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a tough fighter. You know, he beat me. I can't really say much about that. So, you know, it just depends on how... How he goes with you know, so it's like I think you have to just watch and see what happens. And it'd be interesting as well because if Stipe does become a champion, obviously you had that fight with him, but having a rematch with him and also having the title involved in it, is that something that you'd look for? Having a chance to redeem yourself against Stipe, but also possibly fight for that title? Oh, of course. I I I won't lose. I I don't lose rematches. I never lost a rematch, and it would be the same when I fought fight Stipe again or the Doom again with any one of them. If I have a rematch with them, they're gonna lose. So if it's for the world title against Tipe, if he wins it, well then, all Virgin, they're both going to lose. I'll I'll beat them all. (laughs) (laughs) Mark, we don't want to take too much of your time. We really appreciate the time you're giving us. We know you're a busy guy. Before we let you go, there's obviously a you you obviously have a lot of fans. It's no surprise to you. And uh, when we told them you were coming on the show, they sent in a lot of fan questions. We haven't done fan questions in a long time. We figured we'd bring it back with someone like yourself, the People's Man. So we got a few that we're going to fire off at you. The first one is from Will Ko. His question is: Who is the hardest hitter you ever fought? I don't. um, Well, to be honest, it's a it's a heavyweight division, and everyone hits kind of hard. I just. Um, I think it's, it's, it's the times that you don't see the punches is the one that actually makes you realize oh, yeah, and it, it's not and, and sometimes it's an accumulation of punches but you know I, I think everyone hits really really hard I mean in the division there, so, there's no there's no that, one that sort of stands out above the others any particular punch that you remember taking you thought wow that was, that was a big one um, not really all of them hit hard they're heavyweights I mean you know, it's the ones yet you don't see the ones that, that uh, when you when you wake up and think, oh damn, that was a hard punch. <laughs> mm-hmm. The ones you don't you don't really expect, or you know, like I said, if you underestimate someone, then you get knocked out. Well, that's what happens. So uh, I can't really say. I mean, I got knocked out by a middleweight. Melvin Man, have yeah. You know, you know, and that's from a guy that's half my size, and that's because I I, I thought he was just a rubbish fighter, mm-hmm. and I you know that's what I get for for underestimating someone half my size. So. I don't think it's a, you know, I think it's a precision punching and speed. I think that's what makes power. So, who knows? Under the Oak wants to know who is your favorite Dragon Ball Z character. Oh, I like Goku. Goku, he's one of my favorite. He's uh, my favorite character. <laughs> he's kind of like me, clumsy and freaking dumb at sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's the ultimate gentleman. Now, uh, Taurus, he wants to know as an avid gamer, Mark, what is your favorite video game? My favorite video game used to be Counter Strike, and um, you know, Condition Zero. Then I played um, Warhammer. Uh, mm-hmm. I played a few. Uh, um, Age of Empires is, is one of my favorite ones, a strategy game. So mm. yeah, All right. and I've been playing Zombies as well. So Zombies is one of my favorite as well. As well. So, so yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of games I like being a gamer. So. <laughs> 
Machida fan 99 wants to know, and I think I know what you're going to say to this, but he wants to know what is your favorite meal? Um, maybe uh, corned beef and taro is my favorite meal. Mm. Put some KFC, maybe. You know, who knows? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that, that's what we were expecting. The KFC. That's yeah. what you wanted to hear. Right? You wanted to hear KFC. I should be sponsored by those monkeys. Exactly. <laughs> Send some free stuff over KFC. A few, a few questions to go. Uh, Fascist Dictator, that's his nickname. He wants to say, hey, Mark, I'm a huge fan. Just wanted to say I flew to Vegas to watch you at UFC 116, dyed my hair blonde, and wore grey Pride FC t-shirt. I'll always be a fan no matter what. No question from Fascist Dictator. Louis B- uh, Balanos has a question. He says, is Hassi your number one fan, and what do you think of him and his pictures? I'm curious about this one as well. I actually think Hesse is like a really awesome artist. If you if you seen some of his artwork, it's like you can't really paint like that. He's he's actually really amazing. I don't know if he swings both ways or he's you know, but you know, I I, I don't mind Hesse. He's a nice guy. I just um, found him kind of hard to uh, talk to. You know, I did. I don't normally invite fans up to my my room, but I did when I invited him up. It was hard to talk to him because he didn't want to. He couldn't really talk. He was. Too busy just um, making funny noises. <laughs> was he just ecstatic that he was, you know, meeting obviously yourself? I, I don't know what it was. I was trying to talk to him, you know, like, "How was your day, Hesse?" Um, and he's like, <laughs> "I was like, um, so what have you been up to?" <laughs> it, it, that's the noise he was making. I was like, um, "Okay, then." Wow. <laughs> I, mean, I don't mind him. I think he's, a, yeah, I think he's a nice guy. I like him. I like, I like his artwork. I like what he does, and you know, I think he's really awesome. Now, next question comes from Barillas. He goes, hey, Mark, thank you for the epic battles you've been into, but do you have any worries in regards of the long-term damage of getting hit in the head too much? Because some fans like me really don't like to watch you getting hit anymore. We feel bad, he says. To be honest, I don't really care what happens to me in my life. You know, I didn't ever want to be a fighter. I just, I'm just, I just, like I said, I always thought God has gifted me with, with fighting as, as my life what I'm going to do with my life so I can help others. And I, I don't really care what happens to, to Mark Hunt in the end. Um, if I worried about it, then I wouldn't be a fighter. You know I mean? Shuck, I mean, you, you got to say to these people, of this person, you're going to live forever. You know, mm. the answer, everyone already knows that. No, you're not going to live forever. <laughs> you're going to die like everyone else. So to be honest, no, I don't care what happens to me. I'm just going to live a, a full life as, as, as best as I can, enjoy it while I can, and, and then move on. I mean, I don't really care what happens to Mark Hunt. I mean, we're all destined to die. That's for sure. Wow, if I great. die, love what I, if I die doing what I love to do, then that's fine. It's so good. I'm happy. That's why the fans love you, man. Uh, second last question before we get a prediction from you. Kylie Jenner wants to know, what do you think of John Jones coming to your division? And do you think you become the heavyweight champion? Oh, is, is John Jones coming to heavyweights? Oh, in, in the future. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not confirmed, but uh, yeah, apparently he's going to come to heavyweight in the future, possibly maybe 2017. Uh, I think that's awesome. I think that's great news. I think John Jones is a complete competitor. He, he's been a light heavyweight champion. And, of course, he's he's big enough to be a, a heavyweight. So, you know what I mean? Shark, I think that's awesome news. I mean, and there's the who's came from an 88-kilo fighter to beat all the heavyweights because, you know, that's how talented he was. So, you know, John Jones could probably do the same thing. He's, you know, I think that's great news. He just now doesn't have to get a fight with him. <laughs> 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 now Mark let me ask you obviously you mentioned you're not big into sort of thinking of what's going to happen in a fight but if you could come up with one prediction how do you see this fight with Frank Mir going as we finish up um, I think Frank Mir is going to be trying to take me down and I'm going to be knocking him out so I think after you realize you can't take me down then he's going to be knocked out like the rest of them <laughs> Yeah, and uh, absolutely, Mark. And before we let you go, we just want to also say uh, we've heard you're getting into management. You're going to be managing uh, athletes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What made you want to go into it, and where do you stand at the moment? How can athletes contact you to be managed by your company? Well, we're starting a management group. You know, I've, I've had a, a bad run with managers. I've been ripped off many times with managers, so I know I know what it's like with the game and how it works. Um, and the reason why I do it is I want to help others make the right choices and decisions for them because I've already been there. You know, they, all they got to do is fight and win. And um, yeah, you know, like like I said, we I tried to start up a management group, a lot, uh, uh, a union, and a long time ago, it just didn't work. It just because I was just getting ripped off so many times, it's just not good. You don't get the right advice. I never got someone. You know, when you look at the AFL or footy teams, they got people that have that helped them along with different stuff with their taxes and all these sort of things. Where's the where's the fighters? Do they have things like that? They don't. So, I mean, we should have, you know, uh, fighters union, we should have 
see what happens with our taxes, with our with all sorts of stuff, because it's a job for, for us as well, just like everyone else. So I think it's a it's a good thing to help others. I mean, it's a it's a kind of a, a job that not everyone can get into or do because it's it's not easy. So uh, to make it even harder, you got sharks out there ripping everyone else. So the reason why I wanted to do it is because. I can help others, you know. It's just like when I, I just finished writing a book, A Born to Fight, so pretty much explains how I got ripped off and how, how it wasn't good mentally as a fighter to go to without being people to help you on your way up to the, to the top end. Mm. So, is there, you know, is, what's the best way the you know potential fighters can contact you if they want to be managed by Mark well, Hunt? I will be announced, we'll be announcing it when, we, when, when the whole the, the, the frame's up and ready, properly running. So we're just working on the man of different, different things. So probably in the next three months, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to make an announcement with the, the, the juggernaut management group for, for the different fires. We've already got a, already got a few fires we're talking to. So, and I've you know I've got um, um, my business partner Mark Adar. He's a, he's a, he, he's already organising. So once we get those proper things in place, we can make an announcement about uh, with the management group. So then fighters can come and get a hand with anything. So you know. I've still got a, a good name with fighting and the, the fighting organization, so it'd be good to be to get a hand in with these fighters to help them to help them out with their journeys. If they're Excellent. Good enough. Well, that's something great to look forward to. In the meantime, guys, make sure to tune in on March 20th to see Mark Hunt take on Frank Mir at UFC Fight Night 84. That will, of course, be March 21st here in Australia. Don't forget to follow Mark Hunt on Twitter at Mark Hunt 1974. And if you haven't already, make sure to grab his book, Born to Fight. It's a fantastic read. Mark, again, thank you so much for your time and uh, chatting with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. I really appreciate your time. And uh, it's time to go for shit in the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. No worries. I'll let you go, Mark. Have a great day. Thank you very much. <laughs>